Me too. So tell me about the MP2, MPS. MPS. I mean, uh, well, actually, this is you. You created that, right? Or with it was, you with know, it was a collaboration. I got one of Jarrell's guitars uh, after first seeing them at a NAM show. Yeah. And I'm just like I just fell in love with it. It, it just it was it. It's not like any other guitar because you have certain guitars that it's like you, know, you play this and it's kind of like a copy of another guitar. Yeah. But it is a unique guitar that's different from any of the other brands who have guitars out there and so I used it in a show or I just had it with me because I just liked playing it and uh, I was playing a show and then there was a picture of me playing this it just like got all over the internet and I kind of, I was with Gibson at the time and I was yeah I saw I saw that I told Philip you know I still love my Gibsons and still play them and I told Philip, I said, hey, man, you got to, like, you're going to get me in trouble. Because <laughs> there's all these pictures everywhere that just keep circulating. But then I was thinking, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm not even, like, on their, you know, they don't even know who I am, really. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, the guy, yeah, the guy who, who used to take care of me, he went on to another company. But, um, so... You know, that kind of led to creating a guitar. Philip came, Philip Jarrell came up with the idea of making a guitar that would, um, you know, that I could just, that, could, that I could use with all the different things that I do. Yes. Yeah. You know, I play guitar for Madonna, play guitar for Prong, you know, I've done a lot of, sh like, uh, shows around town, like cover gigs with people. I like to do that any chance I get. Yeah. And uh, I mean, that's you learn a lot, and yeah. it's a lot of fun. And so, I took all of my, you know, main guitars that uh, that kind of did everything to Seymour Duncan, and they made the pickups, and they custom made the pickups. Wow! And so you, and basically, you know, I mean, you know, with Madonna alone, she's got a thirty-year career. Yeah. So there's so many different sounds from all of those albums, all of those songs that you would have to recreate to play them live. So, you know, that's one thing. And and, and it can it can do it. So this thing I'm this kind of this guitar that it can it really that guitar sitting right there right, can do it. The one in that case. Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> um, that's the one you're gonna There's thirteen different sounds because you have three pickups and every one of them uh, you can configure the pickup a different way where you only use part of the pickup. And so um, I've been using the this same guitar with we have three different models. Yeah. There's the you know the main one with the Floyd Rose. Yeah. And then there's one with a you know a, just a, a stock tailpiece. And then there's one kind of without all the bells and whistles that's just kind of the uh, the least expensive model or the kind of like the intro model or whatever you want to call it. So we have three different options, and uh, so so I've been using that for the whole. I'm, I'm on Madonna's MDNA tour right now, and I've been using these guitars through everything. And I even wanted. I, I still like a little variety, even though it's just in one guitar. And so, but uh, you can get that variety out of that, right? You can get everything out of there, and I would even. Say like, okay, let's think about this logically. I'm going to be using this guitar. It's going to be covered in sweat after this. I need to have something else to go to, or you know, it's not going to make it to the end of the tour because it's you know it's going to be destroyed. And so uh, you know, I would take one of my other guitars, and I would think that I was going to be playing that guitar for like a certain section of the, of the show. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I, I would set up my sound with that. And then I went back and I was playing, you know, the MPS through the same uh, settings on the same song. I was like, I like this better. But what I started doing just recently is I, you know, I grabbed one of my guitars from another brand here, grabbed one here, just to kind of show like a little bit of a comparison. And um, and it, it it kicks their ass. <laughs> oh, that's great, so man! I'm I can't really wait. Happy I, with it. I can't wait to hear it. I can't wait to hear it. When I got your, like, you know, when you tweeted the message, wait till you hear this sound of this guitar. Yeah, I mean, it really I does mean, anything and everything. 
that you would need that you would need to do I mean I don't even use them all yeah so tell me about your solo album man I mean that's that's the latest album out is uh, it's called Pain Love and Destiny it's my yeah. second album yeah and I'm not on any record label I'm just doing this myself I use Kickstarter to fund the project yeah okay you know, if you're just finding out about Kickstarter. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. all the okay. movie guys use it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. So because because we're here at the Toronto Film Festival. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so. It, it's just not just for making an album. Yeah. You can use it for anything. Yeah. And there's there's a guy who made a watch who like made like almost a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's an artist who's gone over a million. But at the time, um, which was uh, almost oh, over a year and a half ago now. Um, I had some friends who'd used it, they were successful with it, and they, they suggested it. And I was reluctant at first because I thought you were just asking for money, but that you know you, you have a service that you give for everything. And so I used that, and uh, that helped me to, to make it happen. Of course, I went way over budget, as you always do, making an album. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's the first time you get to hear this thing. but. Uh, but, you know, I've just been, uh, I'm working on next year, 2013, like setting up shows. And I just, my third album just went to mastering today. Excellent. And um, that's going to kind of come out in pieces, but uh, working with the, the producer Fleming Rasmussen. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, he did all the Metallica's yeah, yeah. classic albums, yeah. Rainbow, Cat Stevens, Morbid Angel. Yeah. And uh, he, he's my favorite producer ever. Yeah, and if there's anybody, if there's one person on the planet I could get to do my album, it would be him. And I can't believe that I'm working with him. And we really get each other because he is familiar with so many different styles of music. Yeah. And uh, and I've one thing that's worked in my career is kind of being a chameleon, and uh, I, I, it's not like something that I've went out to do or that I was looking to do it just kind of happened that way I think that's the best stuff right you know I mean and I, mean, I like just all kinds of music yeah like I like you know lately I've you know been listening to a lot of Massive Attack the new Dead Can Dance album uh, stuff that's kind of trippy I guess you could say or whatever but um, and then I love acoustic stuff Elliot Smith Nick Dre Jose Gonzalez uh my favorite album that's come out this year is from this group, Now Now, from mm -hmm. I think from somewhere up north, maybe Minnesota or Wisconsin. Yeah. Three piece. Guys, guys, we got City TV downstairs waiting to do a. Okay, we'll go. We'll go. Okay. Okay, we'll go. Okay, Monty, thank you so much, man. Thank, bro. I You're mean, welcome. this is going to help a lot of independent musicians. By the way, it really, yeah, it really is because I mean, it's all about persistence. Yeah. And I mean that worked for Kiss. Yeah, and uh, you know, Kiss. they're coming here on the. They'll be here uh, thirteen. Uh, uh, thirteenth. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. they put out. It was either three or four albums, and then their next album was gonna. They're gonna. They had one more album to deliver, the record deal, and so they put out a live because yeah. and that showcased them as a live band, and then you know they could they could have given up a long time before that. So okay. you just you just never know. Uh, Zach Wilde's band, Black Label Society, like they kept putting out albums, and then all of a sudden one just kind of hit, and then it seems like everybody went back and bought all of their old albums, and they were just like a, an instant success to some people, even though they had been, of course, you know, Zach was Ozzy's guitar player, yeah. but you know, it's it, you just have to keep hammering at it. Cool, man. And Thank. I, I don't even I don't have another choice. I can't, you know, I can't give up. Thanks, thanks, man.